Hey everybody, welcome back to Shenzhen IO. This is Michael, and um, oh my god, I have tried to record this several times, and I just keep derping around and and uh, and being silly. So uh, let's see. In the interim, I played a little bit in addition to trying to record some stuff, but I played a little bit, and I managed to solve the solitaire game. So um, after doing that, we we got our objective completed. And Joe and Wu Li Li responded in Chinese, by the way, um, saying, you know, what a great uh, job it, that she had done, and please tell your daughter that her work is awesome, etc. Uh, so we got a new part, the MC6000. We got our little notice about orbital selfies, and we got a mission to design a pulse generator, which I have actually done a couple of times now. Um, I did have some trouble with it at first, but I, uh, I figured it out. So what we have to do is take an input, this button here, and uh, when the button is pressed, in other words, when its signal is high, 100, we are going to output a pulse. And uh, my original thinking about this was is that we'd have to do a test against the button, and then we'd also have to do like another test against the state of the accumulator and make it whatever it wasn't. But it turns out there's a uh, command in the ar arithmetic section of the um, of the language that'll do that for us, and that is not, which will essentially make a zero, a hundred, or a hundred zero. So uh, we can here test for equality, TQ, P zero, and a hundred. So that's like an if statement in programming, um, which gives us the opportunity to do something when it's positive. In other words, we're gonna put a plus there. So when it is 100, we are going to say simply not. Um, so this command, all of the arithmetic commands, they usually take a parameter, but they perform some operation on the accumulator here. So not is simply going to invert the value of the accumulator from 0 to 100 or 100 to 0. It starts at 0. So if the button is pushed, we're going to flip the value of the accumulator. And uh, when it is not pushed, we're going to reset it. So we're going to move zero to the accumulator. And then now that we're done with that, this is going to be when the button is pushed, we're going to cycle through this thing. It's going to get flipped. And then if we go through again and the button is still pushed, it'll get flipped again. And if we go through again, it'll get flipped again, etc. But if it's not pushed, it's just going to be zero the whole time. And then all we have to do, I think, is move the accumulator to P1 and then sleep for one. And I think that is our program. But let's uh, let's try it out here just step by step and see. So the button's about to be pushed. Yep, goes high. Yep. So we're cycling between the states. And then when the button is not pushed, we're just at zero. So it looks like this is generating our pulses as desired. Let's simulate it the rest of the way and see if we pass the test. I think we will. Again, I've done this twice now, so I actually am pretty familiar with the code needed to get it to happen. Um, I think I mentioned I was you know, initially thinking that we would need two modules, but that didn't end up making any sense whatsoever. So return to our email. We've done this, and uh, Gia congratulates us, sort of. Yes, looks okay. Suitable for our purpose. All right. Thanks, Jeff. So we got two new things we can do. Light up signs from Joe. Joe says, it begins. I got us an incredible deal with a major eSports personality, the Solid Steel Gamer, in all caps. Her team is contracted with us to make light up signs that actually animate for her fans. As long as we can keep the cost down, they're going to want tons of these to hand out at matches. And Jeff says, looks simple, just a few states. And then we have Harmonic Maximization Engine called the Rubbish Audio Thing by Carl Teske, the feisty one. He says, so a contract comes in to build a piece of audio kit. Sounds fun, right? I've always liked audio. This client promises that their little box will deliver crisp highs and booming lows all in perfect balance. Then I see their advert happens to include the much vaunted algorithm that powers this thing. Ah, go on, take a look yourself. I should mention that I put a copy of said advert on your desk. Just look at the pile of papers marked supplemental data since that seemed most appropriate. I should also mention that we still have to do this as sad as it is. Works well, works work and all. And when even when you have to help a dodgy American company market rubbish like this, 
as premium kit for audio files. Carl, get it all in one email next time, will ya? So we have in our packet of information, remember the packet of information, um, <laughs> from Sunnyvale Institute for Audio Engineering, their advertisement. Incredible sound at a breakthrough price. Sound impossible? Nah, it sounds like harmonic maximization. And they go through there how they gearheads have been working in the uh, lab, and they've come up with this wonderful formula, which is audio out is equal to audio in minus 50 times 4 plus 50, which, yeah, doesn't really do anything. So anyway, we got to make this gadget. Uh, and here's our here's our box. Uh, audio in is a simple input connection connected to an audio source. Audio out is a simple output connected to an audio receiver. So if we just patch this to this, then we just pass through the audio. But we have also a input connected to a switch called maximize. If the maximize switch is on, we should be applying the harmonic maximization algorithm. Okay. And here we see what's up. If the button is off, then we're just going to pass through the signal. This is audio in, and we're passing it through. If the button is on, we're going to apply this silly harmonic maximization filter to the thing. And that is the whole story. So I think we need two modules for this one. And the reason for needing two modules is that we have two inputs and we don't really have two inputs on our guy. We need one to output the audio and we need one to input the audio. So that ties up both of our simple inputs. The rest of these are bus inputs which only connect components. So, and we have this maximize button input to deal with. So we can put that into this module do something with it and then put the result out to this module along with the audio signal if this whatever we're passing through needs to be dealt with then we'll amplify the signal or whatever otherwise we'll just pass it through unedited so um let's see how do we make this happen well we need to test the button so um we can tq um tq sorry p0 100. So if the button is pushed, then we'll do something. What will we do if the button is pushed? Why don't we move 0 to, or move uh, 100 to the accumulator? Do we even need to do that? Do we even need to do TQ? Don't we just, couldn't we just move P0 to x1 sleep for what can we do that advance um, start not sleeping really I'm thinking this has something to do with the bus that I don't really understand okay well let's go to the second module here we're going to want to modify this audio signal or not and then pass it along to P1. So why don't we move P1 or P0 to accumulator first off. So that'll put the value that's currently in the um, in the thing over to here. And then we're going to, I guess, look for a signal on this bus here, but I guess we have to actually, well, we might have to, there, there's a way to kind of cue data off of this bus here. And I think this is what might be tripping me up on this guy. But for now, let's not do that. Let's uh, let's test it. Test X0, TQ, X0, 100. If it is 100, then we want to apply this harmonic maximization algorithm to the accumulator. And that would be audio in minus 50. So sub 50. We're going to take 50 away from it. And then we're going to multiply, M-U-L, multiply it by 4. And then we're going to add 50. So that takes care of modifying the accumulator. And then we're going to move the accumulator to P1 and sleep for 1. Does that work? 
I do not know. So our value here is 54. Where button is not pushed, so we're putting out zero to here. And we're skipping all of these. And now we're moving the accumulator to P1. We put the 54 from the accumulator there. And it has gone out. So we have passed that. OK. That's all working up until the button is getting pushed. So now the button is getting pushed. Let's see what happens. So we're getting 100 now off of the bus. So we're executing now the conditional statements here, subtracting 50 from it, multiplying it by 4, adding 50 to it, and then we're going to put 70 out on the bus, or on the uh, on P1. And that looks to have been right. Let's, uh, let's just advance it. Yep, looks like we got it. Okay, so there was no funny business here waiting for the bus. I wasn't sure about that. There's a sleep uh, like SLX and then uh, a bus number. And so we could sleep until there's data on the bus. In order for this bus to function, you have to be sending on it and receiving on it. All right, rubbish audio thing. Holy crap, this thing is awesome. I hooked one of these babies up to my stereo at home and it blew the speakers clear off. Does the job, no question, amazing. I think Joe may not fully understand. We also have self-driving car stuff in a loop. You may be entitled to a settlement. If you bought a self-driving car in the past five years and your car was involved in a rogue loop incident, you may be entitled to, okay, yeah. We'll just skip that. Uh, the law offices of Steed and Holman. So now we have the light up sign, so we also have bring out the Baron. The Baron von Schnapps is in the house, y'all. I was out drinking last night and met someone from the company that owns this brand. There's a drinking game they're promoting that's hella fun and off the rails. Joe is a very upbeat character. I made a deal to supply them with little personal scorekeepers they can give away at their events. Wait, what's the game? What counts as a point? What would be a foul? Surely not individual drinks. I don't remember the actual rules. Okay, well, we're going to skip bring out the Baron for now and bring out the uh, lighted signs instead. Let's just take a look at this and see if I'm even able to solve it. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Click 0 and click 1 are simple outputs connected to display segments corresponding to a clicking animation. Drink 1, 0, 1, and 2 are simple outputs connected to display segments corresponding to a drinking animation. Control the display segments with fixed repeating signals as indicated in the verification tab. So here's our little sign here. All right. And uh, this says Jayo, by the way, which means like give it some gas or bring it on or pour it on or something like that. Um, let's see. So click zero and click one are simple pulses and they're inverted from each other. So we could probably do something with that with like maybe just one um, with one gadget, probably. And then we got drink zero, drink one, and drink two. Three different outputs. Do we need three modules for this? I guess we might need three modules for this. Let's try putting this guy over here. So if we connect P0 up to that, and P1 up to that. Okay, and then we need to supply it some, some pulses. So let's see, click one is going to be zero on the first time step, and click zero is going to be um, 100 on the first time step. So what if we move, accumulator is going to start at zero. So if we moved accumulator to P0 and then performed a not to invert the accumulator and then moved the accumulator to P1, and then performed another knot, maybe, and then sleep for one. So we're moving the zero that's in the accumulator out on P1 to click one, which will be low here, the low pulse. And then we're inverting the accumulator to make it 100. Then we're moving that to P0. I got these backward here. This should be P1. This should be P0. I think. And then we're inverting it again, and then we're sleeping for one, and then recycling. Let's try this and see. OK, 
Okay. Alright, well that sort of did it. Let's see if it's going to do it for next time. And no, that didn't. Um, why did that not work? I don't know. It did not invert it back. Apparently. Hmm. Why not? Let me reset it. Start again. Okay, we start out with the accumulator at zero. And P1 is connected to click one. So we output zero to P1. And then we invert the accumulator. And then we move that to P0. It didn't actually move anything to P1, did it? I didn't see it make that little motion like that. Interesting, why not? Do we need to move zero accumulator? You know what, let's replace these knots. Maybe they're not working the way I think they do. Move 100 to the accumulator. Actually, we don't even need to put anything in the accumulator if we do it that way. If we just consider this a simple animation, we could just simply um, move move one to p zero move zero to p one sleep for one move zero to p zero move one to p one and then sleep for one again? Would that work? No, they both stay. Oh, I'm moving one, zeros and ones, not 100s. Okay, hang on, hang on. We'll get it right. Get it right. Move one, zero, zero. Let's try that. Okay. All right, got it. Got it, 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 got it. You are working. Awesome. Okay. So, I think we're going to need two modules for this. Um, drink one, drink two, drink zero. We're going to have to combine two of them in one module. What seems to be like the easiest one to do? Well, drink one and drink two seem to kind of uh, like this notch is out when this one is in so maybe we could do that and uh, we could put one down here for this let me uh, let me try to wire oh, no here let's just move you over here let's put p1 down to drink zero so on drink zero we're going to um, right yeah drink zero we're going to one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to sleep for six. And then we're going to move. Um, oh, no, hang on. Hang on. We need to make it uh, 100. Oop. Move 100 to P1. Okay. We're moving 100 to P1. We're going to sleep for six. And then we're going to move 0 to P1. And then we're going to sleep for 4. And I think that will take care of it. Let's try. All right, that's working. And you can see our person down here, she's clicking. So that's her clicking animation, I guess. Okay, and now we have our drink animation. So let's hook that up there, and let's hook that up there, and then figure out how we're going to do this. So we need to um, have both of these at zero for now. So let's start the animation there. So we're going to move zero to P0, move zero to P1. I'm not sure if I have enough lines of code to take care of this. <coughs> we're going to sleep for, excuse me, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sleep for six. Well, this thing is impatient, isn't it? 
And then we're going to move one to drink one, which is P0. And then we're going to sleep for one. Then we're going to move zero to P0. Move one to P2, P1, <laughs> which is our drink two here. And then we're going to sleep for two. And then we're going to move one to P zero again. And we're out of lines of code. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Too many things going on in here, aren't there? Maybe we have to just do this one. Uh, let's try just making that one go. That is drink one. So let's clear that out. And I think we're going to have to use this other module to do it. So let's just, if we bring you there, can you connect? No, there, okay, fine. All right, so let's make drink one happen. Uh, so we're sleeping for six. Actually, we're going to, no, we start at zero. So we're uh, sleeping for six. We are moving zero, or no, 100 to P zero. Sleeping for one. Moving zero to P zero. Sleeping for two. Move 100 to P zero. Sleep for one. And then we're done, we're ready to repeat. All we have to do is move zero to P zero. That should get us drink two going, or drink one going. Okay, yeah, drink one is going. So now we need to add the code over here to get drink two going, uh, and we need to add a hookup too. How are we gonna do that? Can you use this bridge? Can we rotate this bridge? Uh, rotate. I uh, don't know how to rotate it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, then let's just delete this. Connect it up over here and change this to be P0. I guess I need to figure out how to rotate that bridge. And then we can bring this all the way around like that. I don't know if this costs us something uh, for the cabling or not. All right, so we're gonna do these on the same track then. So what we need to do is instead of sleeping six here, we need to sleep for five. And then we need to move um, Wait, 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 sorry. First line, we need to move zero to P1, okay? That's setting drink two low and drink zero high. Sleeping for five, and then we're going to move uh, 100 to P1, and then we're gonna sleep for one, and then we're going to now we're going to move zero to P zero, which is drink zero. Sorry, I know this is getting kind of confusing. I don't think this is going to fit. I need to find a better way to do this. I don't think this is going to fit in one module. And I don't think we want to have three modules, do we? Maybe we need to have three modules. Let me uh, let me just pause and uh, add in another module and break this code apart because we're getting kind of long on time. But I mean, this code is pretty simple, really. It's just animation. Let me try another part. Okay, guys, I'm back. I don't think this is the best design at all. There's probably some way we could do this by putting something in the accumulator and using not or something like that. But anyway, we have a different microcontroller for each of these animations. Um, on this one, we've got a um, wait 
No, never mind. We'd have to intersperse it. It's not going to work. Um, so anyway, we got this guy. It's controlling our drink zero. Uh, we've got this guy controlling drink one, and we got this guy controlling drink two. If we step through, we can see it is indeed working. She's clicking and drinking down there. And um, let's try running the simulation, see if it works. We might make it through. I'm not sure about our, our bill of materials here. I don't know if we're exceeding what we're supposed to be doing. I don't know whether our production cost is set. And he did say it needs to be cheap. It looks like maybe it should have been back here. So our power usage is fine, our production cost is not. We could probably do a better job with that. Let's see what they says. Ah, oh, the end result looks great. Love the way it looks like the Solid Steel Gamer is really clicking the mouse button and drinking her soda. This is going to be huge. Well, he didn't have a problem with our cost. So we've got next time, bring out the Baron and infrared sensors. And uh, we, will, uh, we will get to that next time around, guys. Thanks very much for joining me, and I will see you soon. Bye.